Here are 10 athletes who died in action. Find out how their passion for sports quickly took a turn for the worst. Number 10. Antonio Puerta During Sevilla's first La Liga 2007 through 08 match against Getafe CF, 22-year-old Spanish soccer player Antonio Puerta collapsed in the penalty area. He was seen crouching and then collapsed upon moving back to his team's goal after only 35 minutes of the game had passed. Puerta was able to walk to the dressing room where he collapsed a second time. He was taken to the intensive care unit of Virgin de Rasio Hospital where he received cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Puerta died on August 28, 2007 at 2.30 p.m. Doctors later reported that Puerta had suffered multiple organ failure and irreversible brain damage as consequence of multiple cardiac arrests due to a hereditary heart disease which is incurable. At the time of his death, Death, his girlfriend was expecting their first child. Following Puerta's death, FIFA made mandatory the implementation of resuscitation rooms in every stadium that hosted any World Cup matches. Number 9. Ray Chapman Back in the early days of baseball, part of a pitcher's job was to alter up a new ball the moment it was put into the game. This technique was called the spitball. The ball was covered in dirt, saliva, Vaseline, or even tobacco juice. The result was a deformed, dirty ball that flew erratically and, as it came over the plate, was very hard to see. This now banned practice is believed to be responsible for Ray Chapman's death back in 1920. He was struck in the head with a pitch by Carl Mays in a game against the New York Yankees. Mays threw a spitball. Eyewitnesses recounted that Chapman never attempted to dodge the ball, apparently because he was unable to see it. Chapman didn't react at all, members of the Society of Baseball Research claimed. The sound of the ball smashing into Chapman's skull was so loud that people believed it had struck Chapman's bat. He died due to his head injury 12 hours later, on August 17th, at the age of 29. Number 8. Malik Joeyu. Sharks are not the only danger surfers face when riding the waves. Usually it's the wave itself they should be careful of. On Friday, December 2nd, 2005, Malik Joeyu, a surfer known for riding one of the largest waves in history, took an 8-foot wave at Oahu's pipeline in Hawaii. Witnesses claimed that as Joeyu dropped into the wave, the nose of his board sank into the face of the wave, slowing his forward momentum. Due to the loss of speed on this highly complicated wave, he was struck by the lip of the wave and sunk underwater. The force of the wave was so powerful that it broke his board. Another surfer who caught the next wave claimed that the leash of his board was ripped off by the force of the wave. With his board no longer strapped to himself, people were unable to locate him visually. Water photographers and other surfers searched for Joeyu, although their efforts proved unsuccessful for a brief period. Joeyu was found 15 minutes later at Pupukia Beach by surfer Miles Padaka. Padaka reached him and brought him to the shore with the help of other surfers. Lifeguard and paramedics attempted to bring Joeyu back to life, but failed. An autopsy report revealed that he had been hit in his head by the surfboard, instantly making him unconscious. He was only 25 years old. Number 7. Pedro Aguayo Jr. Lucha Libre is one of Mexico's biggest and widely known traditions. Although it is known to be more of a show than actual fighting, tragedies do happen in the ring. On March 20, 2015, El Perro Aguayo Jr. wrestled a tag team match at Baja California, Mexico. During the match, Rey Mysterio Jr. used a head scissors takedown to propel Aguayo out of the ring, but Aguayo returned to the ring, upon which Mysterio drop kicked Aguayo in the back and shoulder to set up for Mysterio Jr.'s signature 619 as Aguayo landed on the middle rope. Mani, Aguayo's teammate, then fell onto the middle rope beside him when Aguayo appeared to be unconscious. Manik shook him slightly to revive him. Mysterio performed the 619, but did not hit either opponent. The match continued, with Mysterio Jr. checking on the unmoving Aguayo, 
bringing it to the referee's attention. The match continued, while other wrestlers ringside attempted to figure out what was wrong with Aguayo. When the match was over, a group of people went to Aguayo, believing he was just unconscious and in need of medical assistance. Officials later brought Aguayo out of the ring. When paramedics arrived, Aguayo was taken to the local hospital, where he was pronounced dead at around 1 a.m. on March 21st, 2015. The pro wrestler was 35 years of age. The cause of death was later announced as cardiac arrest due to a cervical stroke caused by three fractured vertebrae. Autopsy results later revealed that Aguayo Jr. broke three vertebrae due to the dropkick by Mysterio Jr. Number 6. Lane Frost Mankind has always had a fascination with dominating beasts. Although humans have an edge using their intellect to their advantage, the brutal force of a beast can also result in a win. On July 30th, 1989, in Cheyenne, Wyoming, after completing a successful ride on a Brahma bull named Taken Care of Business, 25-year-old Lane Frost dismounted. The massive bull turned and hit him in the side with his horn. Although the horn did not perforate into his chest, it did break several ribs. He was able to stand, waving for help. As he took a couple of steps, he collapsed when one of the broken ribs had severed an artery that led to his heart. He was rushed to the hospital. The doctors pronounced him dead as they discovered his heart injury to be irreparable. He posthumously finished third in the event. The bull, taken care of business, was retired in the 1990s and put out to stud until its death in 1999. Number 5. Todd Skinner Todd Skinner was a full-time free climber and motivational speaker. He was married with three children. Considered a legend of the climbing world, he completed several free climbing ascents, which earned him international recognition. After Skinner had completed a new route at Yosemite National Park on October 23, 2006, he rappelled down the face of the mountain. While rappelling, and due to a failure of the belay loop of his harness, he fell 500 feet and died. Jim Hewitt, a friend of Skinner, who was with him at that moment, had observed that the harness appeared worn. Hewitt, a hundred feet above from Skinner, on the way down heard a snap sound. I looked down really quickly and just saw him falling, Hewitt says. He heard no cry, just silence as Skinner dropped 500 feet to the ground below. On the way down, I saw him bounce once and then land, Hewitt says, and I knew he was dead. He was 48 years old. Number 4. Chuck Hughes during the 1971 NFL season, on October 24th, the Lions received the Chicago Bears at Tiger Stadium. Closing to the end of the game, Chuck Hughes entered the game as an injury replacement for another player. Suddenly, during a play, he dropped to the turf, grabbing firmly onto his chest around the 20-yard line. Dick Butkus, a Bears player, saw Hughes collapse and convulse violently on the ground. Butkus screamed to the sideline hysterically to get Hughes' assistance. The doctors, players, and trainers from both teams ran to Hughes to try and save him. An ambulance was called for and arrived to take Hughes to the hospital. He was pronounced dead at 5.34 p.m. that afternoon. The Lions awaited news of Hughes' condition after the game and were informed that he was dead shortly after. An autopsy revealed that Hughes was suffering from an undiagnosed and advanced arteriosclerosis. One of his coronary arteries was 75% blocked. To this date, he is the only NFL player to die on the field during a game. He was 28 years old. Number 3. Reggie Lewis when Boston Celtics player Reggie Lewis faced an off-season practice on July 27, 1993, he was one of the most valuable players in the NBA. With a relatively short career, Lewis had scored a total of 7,902 points. Lewis had shown symptoms of heart problems in the previous months, which included collapsing during the opening game of the Celtics' first-round playoff series with the Charlotte Hornets. During the practice match on July 27, 1993, he fell onto the court, dead. 
The cause of his death was due to hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, a structural heart defect that is known as the most common cause of death in young athletes. James Crowley, a Brandeis University police officer who happened upon the gym on a routine patrol, and another Brandeis University police officer tried to reanimate Lewis by using mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, but they were unsuccessful. He was 27 years old. Number 2. Ayrton Senna Ayrton Senna da Silva was a Brazilian racing driver and winner of three Formula One World Championships in 1988, 1990, and 1991. He was widely considered as one of the greatest Formula One drivers of all time, voted as the best and most influential Formula One driver of all time in various motorsport polls. He holds a record of six victories at the Monaco Grand Prix and is the fifth most successful driver of all time in terms of race wins. The three-time Formula One world champion died on May 1st, 1994 because of his car crashing into a concrete barrier while he was in first place at the 1994 San Marino Grand Prix at the Autodromo Enzo Edino Ferrari in Italy. His accident was one of the worst of a number of accidents that took place that weekend and one of the first fatal accidents to happen during a Formula One race in 12 years. Senna's and Rotzenberger's accidents, which occurred one day before, became a turning point in the safety of Formula One, provoking the implementation of new safety measures in both Formula One and its circuits. He was 34 years old. Number 1. Mark Vivian Foe Mark Vivian was a Cameroonian footballer who played as a midfielder for both club and his country's national team. After a successful career in his native country, he traveled to France where he gained international recognition and the interest of the world's top clubs. He was drafted into his country's national team and, as of 1994, he played in all of Cameroon's matches. He joined Lyon on a 6 million euro transfer and later was loaned to Manchester City in the 2002 through 2003 season. On June 26, 2003, Cameroon faced Colombia in the semi-final of the Confederations Cup, which took place at the Stade du Gelon in Lyon, France. Late in the game, Foe collapsed in the middle of the field, with no other players near him. Foe's widow, Mary Louise, stated afterwards that the Cameroonian player had been ill with gastric problems and dysentery before that match, and he was insistent to play in his adopted hometown of Lyon. They attempted to resuscitate him in the field, and he was later stretchered off. He was given mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation and oxygen. Medics spent over 45 minutes attempting to restart his heart, and although he was still alive when he arrived at the stadium's medical center, he died afterwards. An autopsy concluded that Foe's death was related to his heart, as it discovered evidence of hyper hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, a hereditary condition known to increase the risk of sudden death during physical exercise. The team's manager, Winifred Schaefer, wanted to substitute him minutes before his heart attack, observing that the player was fatigued, but Foe signaled that he wanted to continue. He was 28 years old. These 10 athletes found what they love, their sport. They all knew that the commitment to a sport required sacrifice, but none of them knew to what extent. They hit pretty much every checklist for what we think of as mermaids. They spend tons of time under the water, free diving to catch fish, often holding their breath for minutes at a time. These women have completely reversed gender roles in their village, taking responsibility for all of the village's fishing needs. 